The 2022 Commonwealth Games are underway, and athletes from all over the world are showcasing their extraordinary talents in Birmingham. But the first few days of the tournament haven't been without controversy. In a shocking turn of events, cyclist Matthew Glatzer was relegated in the third race against Scotland's Jack Carlin, and his bronze medal was taken off him. And in today's video, we're going to discuss if the athlete deserved this punishment. Let's dive in. First off, what exactly happened? Happened. The men's sprint started off pretty normally, and Glatzer came from behind against Carlin to claim the bronze medal in a breathtaking race. And then things got really, really weird. After a super lengthy deliberation that lasted over 30 minutes, the judging officials ruled that he'd be relegated to fourth for moving down toward the inside of the track when an opponent was already there. This apparently caused a slight contact between the two cyclists, and Glatzer's medal was taken from him. Yikes, imagine pulling off an astonishing comeback and then having to deal with that. And the officials immediately faced backlash for this. Channel 7 commentators Katie Bates and Scott McGrory discussed this, and the two were pretty divided. McGrory said that while it was really unusual how long the decision had taken, he understood why it was made. But Bates, who's a former Commonwealth cycling champion herself, couldn't have disagreed more. She said that she's having nothing of that, and claimed that the only time they made contact is when Carlin swung up the track, and it was him who touched Glatzer, adding that if anyone was impeded, it was the Aussie. Next, she really believes Glatzer was robbed. Bates is from Australia as well, and naturally, she was personally offended by the decision. She said that while you have to respect the judge's decision, she is not sure she respects this one. She expressed that she wants to because she believes rules are rules, but genuinely thinks this was a pretty terrible terrible decision. Bates then added that she doesn't see how Australians will accept this and not feel robbed. And yeah, she's right. There's already been a huge uproar on social media regarding the call, and many are saying that this kind of puts a question mark on the credibility of the officials. And according to her, even Carlin will be uncomfortable at the call. Bates feels super strongly about the decision and called it an absolute travesty. She said that she doesn't even believe Jack Carlin will be pleased with this turnaround, because as an athlete, you want to win fair and square, whereas this is simply the most ridiculous relegation she has ever seen. She then expressed that this decision must have broken Glatzer, and it's just not fair, because he doesn't even have the right to appeal. Plus, she even read the rules out loud, and criticized the call even more. The rules read, the competitor shall be relegated or disqualified according to the gravity of the fault committed. She claimed that there wouldn't have been a different outcome with out this small clash, and it'll be a very difficult medal ceremony to watch for everyone involved. And you know what? We completely agree with her. At the end of the day, the slight collision was too insignificant to have any sort of impact on the result, and Glatzer almost definitely deserved that bronze medal. It was really shocking to see the decision go the other way, and we have no doubts that this will be debated for quite some time. Let's wait and see if the officials or organizers address this incident in the the next few days. And now, let's talk about Glatzer's journey at the games. It's been a roller coaster week for the Aussie. On night one, he won gold in the team sprint, but was involved in an absolutely terrifying crash which saw his skin torn to shreds and his British competitor, Joe Truman, knocked out. Then, this entire bronze medal farce happened, and it seemed like it would be difficult for him to get back up from this. But guess what? The very next day, his team claimed another gold and silver medal at the 1,000 meter time trial. And this didn't happen smoothly either. Because of safety concerns, they'd have to make a devastating last minute switch to sprint bars, which both commentators and riders said would cost them one crucial second in a race that only lasts for a minute. It's really quite incredible that they managed to do as well as they did despite this. Glatzer himself smashed the one minute mark and claimed his second gold medal of the event so far. You have to admire his resilience. Imagine being able to pull this off while having to ride with suboptimal equipment. Plus, when you consider everything he's been through recently, it had to take amazing resolve to be able to pull this off. Matty Glatzer, take a bow. And now it's time to move on to some more related news. First, Team Nigeria makes a fantastic start. Team Nigeria has a lot to celebrate already. They started off the athletics event on Tuesday with literally all six of their athletes qualifying for the semis of the 100-meter event. In the men's 
Craig, Favor Ache, and Raymond Ekevo finished in the top 10 in times of 10.12 seconds and 10.14 seconds respectively to automatically qualify. Godson Ogene Brume had to wait a bit with his time of 10.36 and eventually passed as one of the non-automatic qualifiers. Ache is currently Nigeria's fastest man at the moment, and he comfortably won his heat, beating the likes of Nathanael Mitchell Blake. Ogene Brume was initially disqualified for a false start, but he was later reinstated, which obviously had an effect on his performance as he finished third in the sixth heat. As far as the women's race is concerned, things went pretty much the same way, as Grace Nuokocha and Rose Chukwuma finished on top of their respective races. Joy Udo Gabriel, who was a last-minute replacement for Favor Ophili, finished third and made it to the semi-final. Let's see if these athletes can continue this awesome run and bring home a few medals. Next, Cody Simpson wins another medal. Cody Simpson's a man of many, many talents. The dude isn't just a fantastic singer-songwriter, he's also one of the best swimmers in the country. The 25-year-old has really impressed the world with his unbelievable Commonwealth campaign. Recently, the Aussie pop star teamed up alongside national champion Matt Temple at the 100-meter butterfly. In an absolutely thrilling final, Temple won the silver medal. And guess what? All top three swimmers finished within just 0.16 seconds of each other. He had to share the silver with Brit James Guy, while the gold went to Canada's Joshua Leando Edwards. Simpson had a pretty slow start, and it seemed like he was going to mess it up before he powered home in the second 50 meters to finish fifth, which is an extraordinary result considering the circumstances. He did it in 52.06 seconds, the second quickest of his entire career. Did you know that the pop star started swimming again only two years ago after spending 10 years away from the pool? He only started doing it because it was really fun, but now he's proven that he's very much capable of competing with the best athletes in the world. In the post-race interview, Aussie legend Kate Campbell told him that what he's doing is truly phenomenal, and he's basically rewriting what people can do in this sport. She said that when we usually see people coming in as teenagers, they're told that even that's too late. So to do this in your 20s is really quite something. In response, Simpson said that he wants to inspire young people to know that they're capable of doing whatever it is they want to do, and that it's never too late to pick something up. And finally, Ian Reid thinks absent stars will regret missing out on the games. Four world champions have avoided competing in this year's games, including the women's 100-meter gold medalist, Shelly Ann Fraser-Price, who is currently in Birmingham to train, but has chosen to participate in Europe next week. And what's more, 200-meter champion, Sharika Jackson, 400-meter world champion, Shawnee Miller-Webo, and 1,500-meter gold medalist, Faith Kipyegon, are also absent. This has obviously resulted in taking away some of the shine from the track and field program. But Ian Reid, the CEO for Birmingham 22, believes that all these athletes will be seriously regretting this after seeing the amazing atmosphere at the event. He said that if Shelly Ann saw the full stadium, she'd realize that missing this was a huge mistake. He then expressed that there are 30,000 people in Alexander Stadium for every session of athletics, and just can't think of any other place these athletes should be. We have to say, we agree with him. The games have been absolutely awesome so far, and we can't even imagine that someone would willingly miss out on this incredible opportunity. After all, the entire world is watching. Wouldn't you want to make history on such a massive stage? And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think Matthew Glatzer should have been relegated? Let us know in the comments below. As always, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Goodbye for now and see you in the next one.